what are the top five books you should read in the philosophy of science? I'm joined by an expert when it comes to the philosophy of science, Dr. Kevin McCain. He is a professor of philosophy at the University of Alabama, Birmingham. Thank you again, Dr. McCain, for joining me. You've joined me twice, once to discuss the nature of evidence, what it is and what counts as evidence, and another time to, I think I called that a crash course in philosophy of science. So I'm sure anybody that watches this video will be interested in checking that out when they're finished. But thank you for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me again. So the goal of this video is to offer someone five books who maybe this person has no familiarity with philosophy of science or maybe just a little familiarity with it. And they're looking to, you know, get into the topic. So I want to offer them five books. But first, let me ask you this. If you had to give a very brief description of the philosophy of science, what would you say? Yeah, that's a great question, Jordan. Generally, philosophy of science, like any area that's philosophy of blank, whatever you fill in the blank, typically looks at philosophical questions that arise from within that discipline, right? So say if you have something like philosophy of biology, which is a particular form of philosophy of science, it looks at philosophical questions that arise in the study of biology. So philosophy of science is just the general take on that. So it, it looks at questions that arise when we're thinking about or doing science. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and get into the five recommendations. Let's start. They don't have to be in any particular order. You're not ranking them like this one's the best or whatever. Okay, Just good. what is one book that you would recommend on this topic? Okay, great. Yeah. I should start with a small caveat on this. It's a really hard task, but the other caveat is just that I picked five books that are more general philosophy of science. So if someone is interested in a particular area, like philosophy of biology or philosophy of physics or philosophy of psychology, they would probably pick different books okay. that would be more narrowly focused. So these are more broad. Okay. With that said, the first one I have is Uncertainty, How It Makes Science Advance. This one is somewhat of a shameless plug. I'm a co-author of this with Kostas Kamparakis. Kostas is a science education expert. So particularly he works in genetics education. He's at University of Geneva. I picked this though, not just because it's my book, but because we wrote this book with the intention of presenting important philosophy of science issues to an audience that maybe doesn't have any philosophical background or any science background. Oh, and so wow. the nice thing is this will give you an overview of a lot of things, particularly things related to epistemology. So the uncertainty and how we have scientific knowledge and how science works in various ways, but in a way that doesn't presuppose any background in either. And so I think this is a good one for people who are kind of wanting a, a very gentle introduction to the topic. Yeah, uh, that sounds good. It's relatively cheap, so that's good. On average, we spend about one third of our lives at work. That's a huge chunk of your life. So you should choose a career that is meaningful and impactful, especially if you're a Christian. We're called to be good stewards of the talents and time that God has given us. So which careers should you consider? How about the ones that are aimed at solving some of the world's most pressing problems? And if you make one of those careers your goal, what specific steps do you need to take to get there? These questions can feel overwhelming, even paralyzing, if you're trying to figure all of this out alone. But you don't have to. There's a program that can help. Christians for Impact is a charity designed to help Christians with career discernment. They have over 50 experienced mentors who will pray with you one-on-one, -on -one, help you map out a career plan, and connect you with hundreds of Christian professionals. You might be thinking, this sounds awesome, but how much does it cost? Well, this is the most amazing part. This mentorship program is completely free. How does it work? Just spend 10 minutes reading the career guide linked in the description below. At the end of that career guide, you'll see a link to apply for a free one-on-one -on -one mentorship. After submitting your application, you'll hear a response within one to two weeks, connecting you with a career mentor. If you're a committed Christian based in the US or the UK, especially if you're between the ages of 18 and 25, this is an opportunity you don't want to miss. So check out the career guide linked in the description below and apply today. While you're there, check out the Christians for Impact newsletter and podcast. Both will provide you with even more resources to help you start navigating your career journey today. Yeah. The second one I picked is Thomas Kuhn's The Structure of Scientific Revolutions. If I can, there we go. And there's various, this just is the 50th anniversary edition, but there's various editions. It's been around since the 60s. I picked this one because it's, just hugely influential, right? So we, oh, yeah, there we go. So we, we use these terms commonly of paradigm shift and how does science actually change? A lot of that draws from this work of Kuhn. Mm. It's also pretty inexpensive since it's been around for, 
you know, ever. And it's written to be accessible, although one little word of caution, Kuhn uses the word paradigm in it in about probably five or six or more different senses oh, without wow. telling you what it means. So if you do this, I think it's pretty accessible, but I'd also recommend picking up maybe Alexander Bird has a nice book. I think it's just called Kuhn that helps you understand what Kuhn is doing. <laughs> that's, that's funny. Uh, my, my third pick is a cheat that it is the Kurd and Cover and now Hancock philosophy of science, the central issues. It's an anthology. Okay. So this is one of the classic anthologies of, has lots of uh, papers in the philosophy of science covering a range of topics from the nature of scientific laws to induction, to explanation, to just all sorts of stuff. So this one's kind of my catch all. Now, one thing to keep in mind with this as well, these were all primarily written by professional philosophers of science for professional journals. So mm -hmm. some of them can be pretty dense, but this gives you, I mean, covers just the, a range of issues and there are nice little short introductions before each section that can okay. help you orient. But this one is a nice one. If you're, if you just want to get something, that's going to give you a sense of the whole range. Uh, Very good. Now the last two, even with these, it's somewhat this way, but the last two are particularly things that I found really interesting. So they're a little more maybe idiosyncratic. The first is James Woodward's book, Making Things Happen. It's a theory of causal explanation. So as you probably guessed, it lays out a particular way of understanding explanation. It also includes, the first half of the book includes a particular theory of the nature of causation. What's really helpful about this, in addition to the theory that Woodward proposes, which is now a pretty popular view of explanation and causation and widely used in philosophy of science and epistemology and so on, is in part of it, he does an overview with criticism of earlier theories of explanation. So this can give you a helpful sense of what was the earlier theories of explanation? What were their problems and what's one approach to solving it? So this is a really good one there. Yeah. Also, again, this one's pretty technical, so just take your time with it. So that's kind of the first three may, well, especially the first, first two, two possibly yeah. are the most, you know, easy, easily accessible. And then right. beyond that, you're getting it into gets some deeper harder. waters. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's right. And the final one is a book by Hank Direct. It's called understanding scientific understanding. And so it's really focused on what does it mean to understand and what are we after in, in basically in trying to understand things in science. And I like Derek's approach because he distinguishes between different sorts of understanding. So understanding a theory versus understanding the phenomena. And he has a lot of really, it's pretty accessible at first getting into that. And then at the end, he has a lot of actual scientific examples. So he goes through actual science and says, you know, and here's how, you know, scientists, as they were constructing these theories, this is how they were achieving understanding. Mm -hmm. And so those are the five, I just, when you suggested this and I put some thought into it, these were five that I would recommend. Of course, there's lots of others. And depending on if you had a particular thing, you know, if you're focused on, I really want to know about say how science got started or something in a particular issue, it would maybe be different, but this is a nice broad pick, I think. Yes. On that last book, that sounds really interesting. And would you say that it's like, it's also not necessarily for beginners in this topic. You should probably want to start with one of those first two books and then work your way to that one. I think so. Yeah. So actually Costas and I, in the first book and uncertainty, how it makes science advance, we talk a bit about understanding in one of the chapters and try to, we talk about some of Derek's views in that chapter and kind of lay it out in a simplified form. So that, you know, one of the first two books would be good to start with and then kind of dive deeper with the others. Yeah. I'm going to throw in an honorable mention. It's the book that we discussed in our last okay. interview. I called that interview a crash course in philosophy of science. And it's one, one great thing about this book. It's the book was titled understanding how science explains the world. I think that's the title, right? Yeah. And one really nice thing about that is it gives an overview and it's a very short book. It's like little too, like it's not even right. as big as in any of its dimensions as like a typical book you might think. So it, I found it really useful and that's coming from a high school science teacher. I thought that it, it gives a nice background to what's going on when it comes to philosophy of science. So I wanted to throw that honorable mention in there. 
Well, thank you. Yeah, I'm glad you, you liked it. And it's, it's that's what it's meant for, to be a nice kind of introduction as well. And it's mm -hmm. cheap. I'll mention that one's probably, yes. I think it's like $15 or something. All right. Well, thank you so much, Kevin, for doing this. And I really appreciate it. And I would encourage you all to go check out both my other interviews with him. Like I mentioned, one was on what is evidence and the other was on a crash course in philosophy of science. And also check out the other interviews that I've done in this playlist. We've discussed the top five books in logic, metaphysics, epistemology, ethics, and more. Thank you for watching and keep exploring Christianity.